<clears throat> okay, welcome back, friends. There's one last fix I want to make to my test file. Let me head over there now. Okay, here we are. <clears throat> so, right now, inside of both of my tests, <clears throat> this one here and this one here, I have some repetitive testing logic. I say several uh, times in a row uh, in here, if these things are not equal, then throw an error, okay? So anytime we have code duplication, that's always an opportunity to do some refactoring or cleanup. So in this video, I'm gonna take a look at a module in the Node.js standard library that will automate if the, um, it will, it'll automate all these if conditionals or all the if conditional code blocks is what I meant to say. And I'm gonna condense each of these ugly if statements into one single function call. So head over here to my browser and I have opened the Node.js standard library, which you can go to by going to nodejs.org forward slash API. And then you can click on either the 12.14 or 13 something documentation. And then the very first one uh, here is the assertion testing. And <clears throat> once you're there, this is a module that has a bunch of different functions inside of it that allows us to essentially automate exactly what I'm doing in my test form. The different functions I find in here will allow me to make assertions or compare different values against each other in slightly different fashions. One of those functions is the strict equal function. So let's look for that one. So it's called strict equal. Let's see, where are you, strict equal? There it is, strict equal. So strict equal is one of those good examples that I can use. I would call assert.strict equal, and then I pass in the value that I actually have out of my test as a first argument. And as a second argument, I pass it the value I expect to get. Internally, strict equal will check to see if these two values here, the, the actual unexpected, which in this case, where this example here, they have like one and two. So strict equal will check to see if those two values are equal to each other. If they're not, it will then throw an error. Now I can use this very easily to replace all the current if statements that I have. So let me head over back to my code base and I'm gonna do that replacement now. So at the top, I'm gonna to require, so keep in mind you have to first require in that library. So const assert require assert like so, okay? Now I can go down to all of my if statements and call assert.equalStrict and I'll show you. So I'll start with this test right here. I'll make a little room like so. So assert.strictEqual. And the first argument will be the value that my code produced. So for me, in this case, it will be the sum variable, okay? The sum variable that we see here this for each uh, function there. The second argument is going to be the value I expected to find, which in this case is six, like so. So I'll save that. And what you see here, um, you see the two arguments, but optionally you see here a third argument, which is a message. That message is basically an error message. So it's optional if you want to pass that in. I think I am going to pass it in. And so this way, when I add in this third argument, the third argument is basically the error message. So if I put in an argument in there, it would be a string and it would print out only when something goes wrong. So I'm basically just going to grab this string here, throw that in there like so as a third argument. And so the only reason to put in that argument there is just to clarify what I'm trying to compare here. 
Um, now this is a simple test, uh, so it's not strictly necessary to do what I just did there and add that third argument of the error message. Uh, because the idea is if something does go wrong, it would be easy to understand what is going on. But I like to make code and write code in a way that's crystal clear what's going on. Um, I look at it in a way of this is what I would like for a, an engineer that uh, has touched the code base before me to do so that when I go behind that engineer, I can understand what's going on quickly. And believe it or not, I actually do my best to do the same uh, when I'm touching a code base uh, so that the next guy or gal coming behind me can understand what's going on. All right, um, so I pretty much, this is pretty much it, everything you see here on line nine. So now I can actually just remove the ugly statement and save that. And I'm gonna head over, uh, so to be clear, uh, what I have there completely replaces that if statement. So it's saved, I'm gonna head over to my terminal and run it and see what happens. So here on my left, I'm gonna go into the high dash, project, which is the project that I'm running this code in. Let's do an ls, make sure, yep, that's the one. So now I can do node index.test.js. And sure enough, the fact that nothing printed out means that it ran successfully. And nothing happened because I did calculate a value that was equal to the expected value. So sum and six were equal to each other. So now I'm going to head back to the code base and change the value of six to force my test to fail. But this time I'm going to add, um, no, I'm just going to change the number. I'm not going to change. I, I thought I was going to change the error. There's no need. There should be no need to change the error message. That third argument is fine as it's. I'm just going to change that to six to seven and then head back and then do, actually, you know what? Yeah, I'll change, it doesn't really, you don't have to do this by the way, but I'm just being kind of quirky, just kind of anal, so to speak, to sum the array. Cause I really like crystal clear error messages, which we don't often get in JavaScript. All right, so now if I go back and I run this, now we get the error message. Throw new assertion error, assertion error, expected for each to sum the array, okay? Um, so this is, this is good. This is going to, what I just wrote here on line nine, condenses down all of these different tests that I wrote quite a bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and change that seven back to a six. And you can see that it works now. If we run it, no error message. Okay, so now I'm gonna head down to the map function here, this area, and update the if statements here as well. So in here, what I'll do is I'll do assert dot strict equal. And then this one's going to be, you know what? I'm just gonna grab it from here. So I'm gonna copy this. That's first argument. And then the second argument is gonna be two. Then what I'm gonna do is just copy, paste this two more times. And so this one's gonna be one, this one's going to be two, this one's gonna be four, and this one's gonna be six. Okay, so now I can delete all these if statements because the assert dot strict equal takes their place. Okay, so next I'm going to save, or it's saved, and I'm gonna head over to my terminal and test it once more. And sure enough, everything is good. So I'm gonna once again cause this test to artificially fail. And I do this to, to ensure that there's not some flu. So like for example, Maybe I forgot to save my file, and so that's what's making my test pass uh, when it should be failing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just simply change the six to a seven, save it, and run again. And sure enough, 
throw new assertion error, expected values to be strictly equal. Uh, so basically here, the error expected six to be equal to seven, um, but that's not right. It should have been uh, expected six to be equal to six. So that's why we're getting the error. So that kind of, so see, this is an example where the error message is a bit confusing, but I didn't change it um, because, you know, I wrote three assert dot strict equals. I wasn't going to do all that for the sake of clarity and keeping this video concise. Um, but that's why I changed, changed it for the other one. So I, I like crystal clear error messages whenever I have the power to, to make them clear. So now there are other functions inside the Node.js uh, standard library that I'll go back that we can use. In particular, we could technically replace uh, this test with another function called deep strict equal. I saw it earlier. Where are you? There it is, deep strict equal. And this function would take a look at all the values inside of an object. And in this case, my array and some expected value and ensure that they're equal. So technically, I could replace the uh, three calls that the three calls that I have here with the deep strict uh, strict equal. Um, so basically, with a single call is what I'm saying. So I wouldn't have to write three times. In fact, let's let's try that. So deep strict equal. And so as the first argument, I would just put result, nothing else. I don't have to index it. And then for the second argument, argument would be the array of two, four, and six, like so. And then these here, I can just comment out. So now this function will take a look at all the different values inside of result and make sure they are equal to all the values inside of the array and in the same order. Okay, so I'll try this again. And sure enough, we're good to go. Um, so I'm going to make this fail as usual on purpose. And what I will do, how am I gonna make it fail? I'll just change this six to a seven and go back, test again. And sure enough, we get an assertion error, expected values to be strictly deep equal and what this is saying is that the actual value passed was seven, and that's um, kind of what you see here with the, with the red minus. So that's what was passed was seven, but the expected value was a six, and that's designated by the, by the plus uh, there in green. So deep strict equal gives, actually gives us a better error message. And in fact, I think I'm gonna stick with deep strict equal. I like, like I said, I know I've been <laughs> kind of repeating this, but I like um, very clear error messages. All right, so that's it. I have a solid testing implementation. In a subsequent video, I'm going to replace this custom test here with an outside testing library, and you will see how all this stuff is identical. All right, I'll see you then. Stay tuned for that. Thank you.